Welcome to Mock Rockets. Legos rock. And so do rockets. Alright, welcome to our YouTube channel. So this is our first uh, video um, about uh, the rockets that we design and build. And uh, it's right now it's the beginning of March 2019. So we started working back in uh, the fall of 2017. And our goal was to build the BFR Starship. And so we had to learn a lot of software and we had to learn how to buy Lego pieces at like BrickLink. Um, so we had a lot of stuff to learn, um, and we'll we'll talk about that maybe in future videos or something. But for now, our goal has been accomplished. We finally built uh, the SpaceX BFR, and we've been going off the 2018 version of the BFR, which kind of had some white on one side and gray on the other. And now it's sort of changed uh, design a little bit, but uh, that could just be changed by changing from white to uh, uh, light bluish gray. Um, so, let's walk through uh, the BFR and we'll talk a little bit about uh, its specs uh, as well as some of the, the, the troubles that we had in designing different parts of it. So, let's start here. Uh, this is the booster, the super heavy booster. Um, and this thing is massive. Uh, what did I say? Uh, it weighs just over a kilogram, so 1,050 grams. That's about you know, two and a half pounds or so. Um, and it has 31 engines. We spent um, at least one day, maybe two, trying to figure out the right arrangement uh, of those engines. And we used these kind of Fez hat pieces um, as the engines themselves. They kind of had the best aspect ratio for a Raptor engine. Now the fins, these were really straightforward to design. Um, it, just do a little math based on the published uh, specs of the uh, booster. The math uh, says that this thing should be 10.4 studs in diameter. And our diameter, I'm not, again, I'm not sure if you can see it very well, but I'll show a photo. Our diameter ended up being 10.5 studs. So very, very accurate. Um, but it was actually quite a challenge because the official like Saturn V uh, Lego uh, diameter is 10 studs. So we had to adapt it a little bit. And the way we did it was by, um, so we called these parts here with the slopes, these are we call the sheathing. Um, and these parts in between we call the stringers. And so we have two different kinds of stringers and they're attached uh, using some 1x5 uh, Technic pieces. So that's, uh, you can kind of see them right in here. Um, so there's three or four of those running up the side and using uh, Technic 1x1 bricks to kind of hang it uh, orthogonally. Uh, and these are just Technic beams uh, that we've run up the side. So all that's pretty straightforward. The grid fins, um, we had a lot of fun trying to get the right sort of uh, grid fin that can spin easily and move in and out. And we ultimately decided to use here um, these pneumatic sort of T-shaped pieces. Um, and then we used, uh, I'm not sure how well you can see it, but these uh, sort of, um, what are called? They're called stickers. Uh, the, so they have a really nice sticker. I think they're for a bed of a, originally from a bed of a truck, um, but they're on the clips here that are nice. And we do have uh, some uh, thrusters, cold gas thrusters, RCS thrusters. thrusters. Um, and these, we just kind of use these one by one flower pieces to kind of indicate they can shoot different ways. <clears throat> and then just like from what we could gather from some of the photos that SpaceX has released, we kind of uh, styled up here with the light bluish gray color around the top. And the match isn't quite perfect. You can maybe see uh, underneath here the grid fin, there's a mismatch on one of these uh, modified one by two uh, plates. But overall it's pretty close, pretty happy. Now how does it attach, how does the upper part, the Starship, attach to the booster. Well, we have two clips that are held uh, orthogonally. We, we tried four. That was problematic for a number of reasons. And moreover, uh, it was unnecessarily strong. The, the, the two is just fine in terms of strength, and it releases more easily. And you can see we have these uh, one by, uh, sorry, two by two um, modified tiles, like a double jumper, uh, two by two jumper. And uh, those are to steady the Starship because the registration is a little bit off, and otherwise they kind of wiggle. Uh, next to each other. Okay, so that's about it uh, for the booster, so we'll set that aside. Now, the booster was very straightforward. Uh, we were able to reuse a ton of pieces from the Saturn V itself. Now, the Starship, on the other hand, this, 
this was very challenging. So ultimately it ended up being 900 grams, or 897, um, so a little more than a pound. And uh, so again, we'll start at the bottom. So we have seven engines here, and we kind of, in some of the SpaceX photos, you can kind of see an arrangement of maybe it's, I don't know what it is, um, ex something external around the engine. So we kind of got those in there with some, with some uh, curved slope pieces. We have our clips to attach to the Starship, and the arrangement of seven engines was extremely tricky. It, well, the arrangement is very easy, but making it attach and keeping everything strong was very, very tricky. We went through, we went through at least four or five different methods for how to make it attach nice and strong and, and with the right arrangement of seven engines. <clears throat> the fins, also very straightforward, just a little bit of math from the published uh, specs and sort of figuring things out. Um, and again, we have sheathing up the side. And instead of stringers, we kind of have small sheathing. So it's not a perfect circle all the way around. Then up at the top, we have uh, these kind of freely rotating uh, fins um, for how the Starship will control itself as it re-enters uh, the atmosphere. Now, we'll talk a little bit about the design of this thing because uh, it was very tricky. First of all, we started using these pieces. They kind of have these two by two square arrangements and then little clips in here. Um, but these are the devil. They're terrible. Don't use them um, if you have a similar design. One, it uh, just has this open slot so they don't sit in nicely uh, uh, and they don't, like, they don't lock in easily with like a long axle that runs up the middle. And uh, these clips are just infinitely problematic. You always get registration errors um, as you go around the circle. So uh, I'll put up the part number and tell you not to use them. Instead, we used uh, wagon wheel pieces. Um, and interestingly, we didn't need 20 of them. We only needed, well, we really only needed one, uh, but we ended up using two just to add a little more strength uh, on the inside. And uh, so the, the top is kind of where things get really ugly. There really is no good solution um, in terms of the Lego pieces uh, that are available. Um, some of the things we did to keep making it round were to try and use this dish piece up top um, and the cone and these uh, one by two, uh, these wonderful one by two curved plates that are in here. Uh, this is the Starship. Together, the whole thing weighs uh, almost two kilograms, so it's almost five pounds. Um, and so let's show how these attach. Pretty simple and straightforward. Two clips, uh, and it hangs on there quite nicely, you can see. And uh, yeah, so you don't need to hold the Starship. Uh, it all works great, all by itself. Okay, so it took us over a year to work out all of the design of the Starship, and of course SpaceX went and changed it a little bit on us, but uh, making that change uh, for our LEGO design uh, was pretty straightforward, just changing everything to light bluish gray rather than using the white. Uh, that adds a little bit more cost. So we can talk a little bit about cost. Um, we were able to reuse a lot of pieces from the official uh, LEGO Saturn V, um, uh, especially those curved slopes. Um, and a, a lot of the parts we really tried to use simple, straightforward parts like one by two bricks uh, and, and other parts that we knew were in the Saturn V. Okay, the total part count for this thing ended up being 1,714 pieces. And, uh, and it was truly a joy to build and design. So I hope you enjoyed this LEGO video. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter. Uh, and please check out uh, our instructions available on rebrickable.com. Have a great day.